It's now time for the North Shore Drive podcast. The Pittsburgh Steelers are in the playoffs facing the Buffalo Bills. We're going to talk about this matchup, but also how the Steelers got here, all the factors that are going to play into this matchup, and if the Steelers can finally get a playoff win for the first time since 2017. All here in the North Shore Drive podcast and the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato. Let's get into it. You are now listening to the North Shore Drive podcast. A show on all things Pittsburgh sports from the writers of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Hosted by Christopher Carter. Hello and welcome to the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Ray Fittipato, one of our esteemed Steelers beat writers. And we are here talking about a Steelers playoff team for the third time in four years. They've, they've made it to the, they've made it to the dance. We'll get to talking about all the things to look at, look at for this team. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video. If you enjoy it, subscribe to this channel to get all of the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes Saturday episodes from the North store drive podcast uh, and go to the post is post doc post dash gazette.com to get all of our, our, our written work there. Um, our, this show is also brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. Go to Mike's Beer Bar to experience their 500 different available beers, 300 of those beers being local, and 80 of those local beers being available on tap. You'll never run out of options because, trust me, I never do, and I'm always there. They have over 20 televisions if you want to watch the, the Steelers game uh, from, uh, from you know some, somewhere in Pittsburgh. If you can't make it to Buffalo, there's no better place to go than Mike's Beer Bar. They also have amazing food options. We'll get more to that later. Ray. We get, before we dive into the matchup with the Bills, I want to just get your impression of how this team made it to the playoffs and where they are right now compared to the last time they made the playoffs two years ago with the 2021 team because, you know, they're only a game better, I think, or a game and a half better because that team was 9-7-1. and one. Um, But, or I guess a half game better. That's the best way to put it. But um, still, the, the, you know, people are looking at this team and they see the record and there's some people out there that might think, ah, they are just sneaking into the playoffs. They they probably can't do anything. Do you feel like this might be a team that's in a better position to do damage in the playoffs than, than that team? I don't know if they're in a better position, Chris. I think what Mike Tallman and his staff did a really good job this year of was weathering the storm with all the injuries. And if you remember, it went back, um, you know, to the preseason and even, you know, in the opener when Deontay Johnson and Cam Hay were – uh, both uh, were injured and had to go on IR. And the injuries just, they didn't stop. I mean, in, in the second half of the season, the big storyline has been the backup inside linebackers and now the backup safeties. And I, I think when you look at it, we all know every team deals with injuries. And I'm just looking at the, you know, the Indianapolis Colts, the, all the injuries they had. They lost their quarterback, Richardson. They lost their running back, Jonathan Taylor, for a good portion of the second half of the season. But in the end, the Steelers did a better job of figuring out ways to win um, with their backups. So when I look at this season, Chris, um, that's what I think I'm going to remember the regular season for. Um, obviously, this big matchup in Buffalo this week, you know, no T.J. Watt. It's going to be a tall assignment to, to go up there and to get a win. But over the past three weeks, I've learned not to underestimate this team. They figured out a pretty good formula. Um, it's been working for them, and we'll see if they got one last uh, one last upset in them in Buffalo. Well, let's let's talk about T.J. Watt for a second because <laughs> after the game, the reports we were seeing, uh, and mainly again from J.J. Watt, who was kind of just streamlining all of us, uh, you know what was happening. It was presumed that T.J. Watt had a grade three MCL sprain, which if that's what it was, he would have it just definitely been out the entire playoffs. There wouldn't have been a chance for him to come back, but. It was then revealed uh, Sunday that it was a great two MCL sprain, which gives hope that he could be back in maybe a couple weeks. Uh, I mean, MCL, you know, that, that is, that it's a it's a be better situation. Uh, for example, uh, the Ravens safety, Kyle Hamilton, had a grade one MCL sprain earlier this year, and he didn't even miss a game. So there's a chance that TJ Watt could be back if they survive this first week. Um, but Ray, as we've seen for years, years prior, Surviving games without T.J. Watt has been an extremely tall task for this Steelers organization. But I'd argue that since he's become like superstar T.J. Watt, 
this might be the best suited that they've had to kind of just fill in for him. They can't replace TJ Watt, yeah. but they can have backups ready for him. And Nick Herbing and Marcus Golden might be the best one-two punch to fill in for him that they've had since he's become TJ Watt. Yeah, Chris, they, they knew that was a big problem um, after last season, and they addressed it. You know, Nick Herbig was a guy who didn't come until the fourth round, but he was a very productive player at Wisconsin. And then kind of late in the process, I want to say, I think it was early in training camp or maybe late in OTAs, I forget. But they added uh, Marcus Golden, who uh, is a former college teammate of outside linebackers coach Denzel Martin. So you kind of knew when, you know, with Denzel here that Marcus was going to understand his role. There wasn't going to be that, you know, Melvin Ingram dynamic to it where he didn't understand what his role was going to be. Um, those guys have fit in really well. I, I go back and I look at last year. Um Malik Reed gave them almost nothing yeah. uh, as, as their top backup. Um, in previous seasons, you know, it was either Anthony Ciccolo or Cassius Marsh or someone of that ilk, and it just wasn't good enough when TJ or, or, or anyone else went down. You know, Bud Dupree went down a couple of years ago. They didn't have that depth, um, you know, to withstand a blow like that. We all know what the record is. It's going to be a major storyline this week, but I, I do agree with you. This is the best equipped – they have been since T.J. Watt has been here to survive a type of injury like this in the short term. Hey, if it's only one game, maybe they can do it. Um, we, we saw what Herbig did out in Seattle. I don't know if they win that game without him. Uh, Golden, very quietly in limited snaps, has four sacks this year. Um, and he's still bringing it with uh, even at his advanced age. You know, So uh, we'll see what happens Sunday. But, uh, of course, that's going to be a major – major storyline this week and uh you know we'll see what uh, young herbig and uh the old vet marcus golden can do and i also i'd also say you know a big part <clears throat> of this too is while they are losing tj watt they're getting back both minka fitzpatrick who you reported you know said he he'd be he'll be back if they're in the playoffs and right. demonte kz who'll be coming off the suspension which was reduced after the colts game uh so now their safety room is intact, especially with how well Eric Rowe has played uh, yeah. and Patrick Peterson has played of late. Uh, now, I think there's a legitimate question. Who do you play at safety uh, primarily this week? Does Patrick Peterson go back to cornerback or does he stay back there with Micah Fitzpatrick and then you decide between KZ and Rowe? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be an interesting dynamic. Uh, you know, Patrick Peterson didn't tackle well in that Ravens game. That's a little bit concerning for me. Um, you know, that one touchdown drive, he was just – he was bad. That's really the reason why they, they got into the end zone for the first mm -hmm. and only time in that football game. So having Minka back is going to be huge in that regard. He's a short tackler. Um, you know, KZ um, is a good player. He knows where he has to be. So, you know, it, you know Peterson, I don't know what you do with him. Maybe you sort of just use him as that hybrid guy. Um, maybe you put him in the slot like you did. Uh, a little bit early in the year, although Chandler Sullivan's been playing okay too. So yes, yeah, they, they got some options there. Um, the the nice thing about this year, and I, I don't think the Steelers had this last year when they went up there and lost. I think it was what thirty eight to three, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, they got Joey Porter, who can follow Stefan Diggs around now, yep. and you know you can sort of configure the matchups on the other receivers however you wish. But if he's able to lock down. Stefan Diggs or just limit him, don't let him go off and have a big game. Um, I, I think you could sort of figure out the secondary, um, you know, matchups there. I, I think the tight end matchup uh, is going to be big in this game. They got good tight ends. The Steelers have had issues covering tight ends this year. So I think there's a real opportunity for a bunch of safeties to get playing time in this game. And I think Minka might be challenged right off the bat with, uh, you know, some matchups against uh, Dawson Knox and you know, some of those other Bills tight ends who have uh, done a good job this year. Absolutely. I want to talk more about that matchup specifically because this is not going to be an easy matchup. And, in fact, I think the of the three teams they could have played going into this weekend, they could have played the Chiefs, the Bills, and the Dolphins. I actually think the Bills are the hardest draw of those three teams. I want to get your thoughts on that, Ray, on the other side of this break here of the North Shore Drive podcast on the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. But first, I want to remind you, that this show is brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. When you're when you're coming to Pittsburgh, if you want to see the best bar, it's Mike's Beer Bar. It's right on it's right on Federal Street, right across the street from PNC Park. They have a lot of baseball memorabilia in there because they they, they love their their Pirates. But 
they also have over 20 televisions. So if you're coming to watch the Steelers game, if you're in, and you want a place to check it out with a bunch of other Steelers fans, there's no better place to see it. You'll see all the TVs. You'll celebrate with all the Steelers fans all, th- all throughout this, the, the game sun, Sunday, 1 p.m. when they face the Bills. Or if you just want to come to watch any sporting event, you can even reserve a TV with a uh, reserve a table with a TV to make sure that you're watching the game that you want to see. Maybe you want to watch the college football championship Monday night or anything else. But they all, while you're there, you're also enjoying one of 500 different available beers. 300 of those beers are from the local area, and 80 of those local beers are available on tap. And they're always switching new ones in and out, so that you can always get a new experience when you're coming to Mike's Beer Bar. They also have their steak on a stone meal, where you can you choose your or your choice cut of steak brought to you on a heated stone. And every time you cut a piece off and you press it into the stone, you choose how well done you want every single piece to get the best experience. It's Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. Go to the Mike's Beer Bar to get your sports fix and experience the best bar in Pittsburgh. And when you get there, tell them. Chris sent you. We're back here in the North Shore Drive podcast. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, Ray, let's talk about this Bills team. I, I, I said that at the end of the break there, that this would be, of the two <coughs> teams, I thought this would be the toughest draw for them to for, for them for them to get it simply because I thought the Dolphins were really banged up and as we kind of even saw on Sunday night football and I just I haven't been confident about the Chiefs or I haven't been like you know inspired by watching the Chiefs lately their defense is tougher this year but outside of Travis Kelsey they, they haven't developed a real receiving threat and this is the most human Patrick Mahomes has ever looked because of it um, and meanwhile, while the Bills, they can also be very, you know, mercurial and very up and down. Um, they're playing hotter of late. And I, with, with Diggs and Davis and Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox and, and James Cook's emergence, I, I just feel like they're, they're probably the most capable offense that they'll play. Um, and they don't have a bad defense either. Yeah, Chris, when you look at this matchup statistically, um, the, the Bills have a top five or top ten um, offense, both in scoring and total offense and in scoring and total defense. You know, the one area where the Steelers might be able to have a little bit of success is that they're not a great run defense. Um, you know, so maybe that's the one area that the Steelers can kind of hone in on and maybe attack. But, I, you know, I think you're right. You know, I was thinking about this yesterday when it was still undecided. Are, are they going to go to Kansas City or are they going to go to Buffalo? Um, let's take this season out of the equation. Let's just – uh, talk about intangibles. Um, do you want to go to Kansas City and play that playoff hardened Super Bowl caliber roster that's been there and done that? Or do you want to go to play a Buffalo team that's playing better this year, but has all those ghosts of the playoffs in the past, including a bad home playoff loss to the Bengals last year? So my point is, if you can jump on them early, okay, you can put some doubt into their minds. We've all seen Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen go at it like cats and dogs in the past. They're a team that I think can fall apart pretty quickly, you know, if things go bad. Um, but you got to put them in that position. You got to you got to play well early. You got to do all those things to put yourself in a position to make that happen. So I agree with you. I think stylistically, and you know, you look at the, just the matchups and, and the way these two teams are structured. Uh, it, it's not a great matchup for the Steelers, but you know the playoffs is a whole different animal, and there's uh, there, there's an emotional element to it, and there's a mental element to it. And I don't know how Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, and those other guys who have kind of um, choked in the past, I don't know how they're going to handle that again if they get behind early. Well, let, let, let's focus on one of those guys, and that's Josh Allen. He's going to be the key focus of this game. He's a guy that you know some people make the case he should be you know NFL MVP. Um, and look. He has the most touchdowns scored of any player in the NFL. I think he has, what, 29 passing touchdowns and 15 rushing touchdowns. That's yeah. 44 touchdowns. That's a lot of scoring that he does. But he also turns the ball over quite a bit. He has seven fumbles and 18 interceptions on, on the year. And he's now facing a Steelers defense that has uh, – Created, created the eighth most turnovers in the NFL, the 11th most interceptions in the NFL. And that's a in a year where I think Minka Fitzpatrick's probably played maybe eight complete games um, yeah. and hasn't recorded an interception yet this season. 
do you see as maybe Josh Allen's kind of, you know, not, I wouldn't say carelessness because he does like take care of the football. He tries to try to take care of the football, but he's a risk taker. He wants to make the big play. And sometimes that gets his team into more trouble. Do you see that as an advantage that could work in the Steelers favor in this game? Listen, um, it could. I, I think everyone who watched that Buffalo Miami game on Sunday night saw them go up and down the field. I mean, Josh Allen had a great game statistically, but he turned the ball over early in that football game, and they had to, um, you know, they had to have a good second half to to uh, you know win the AFC East and get that number two seed. And uh, well, you know, one of the touchdowns came on a punt return, so he had the big red zone pick um, early in that game, and he had another pick. Um, you know, that set back that that football team. So uh, I think they're a team that's capable of scoring 31, 35, 38 points, Chris, but they're also capable of, of, of a performance like yesterday where they can go up and down the field, but they can have key turnovers. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden they're in a football game that uh, maybe when you look at the stats, they, they shouldn't be in. So that's the reason that uh, Ken Dorsey got fired halfway through the season. They were careless with the football, too many turnovers. Um, it's been br- uh, better with Joe Brady um, designing the offense and calling the plays. But, you know, we saw last night uh, up in or down in Miami that, uh, you know, that can come back to bite them again. So to me, that's what this uh, this game was all about. The Steelers have been good at forcing turnovers. Uh, the Bills have been a team that's uh, uh, coughed it up quite a bit. So if that happens – I fully expect the Steelers to be in this game, but uh, you know you got to go out there and make it happen. Um, Minka Fitzpatrick is back. I, I know he hasn't been the turnover machine that uh, we all thought he was going to be this year, but maybe he's got one or two in him, Chris, that uh, can help turn the tide of this football game. Maybe. And Josh Allen has thrown four interceptions in his last three games against the Dolphins, Patriots, and Chargers. Um, but you know, like you said, it's not just him. This is an offense that's fully loaded with talent. Stephon Diggs also big. You talked about Joey Porter Jr. earlier in the show. How ready is he for a matchup like that? Because he's faced a lot of them this year. He's faced DeAndre yeah. Hopkins. He's faced Amari Cooper. He's faced DK Metcalf. You know, he's he's lined up against some big name receivers, and Stephon Diggs is right up there. Uh, I think this is a unique opportunity for him on the on a big stage to show just how much he's grown as a rookie. Yeah, listen, Chris, if the Steelers want to take Diggs away, they can do that. They can put Joey Porter on him and kind of, you know, bracket him or double cover, always have a safety on him. Or they can go the other direction. You know, they, they can put a different corner on him and always, always, always give give them help and, and double cover and, you know, force Dawson Knox to beat you or Gabe Davis or any of those other secondary receivers um, that the Bills have. They're, they're good players and they're certainly capable – of stepping up. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what the Steelers do. Um, you know, I would mix it up a little bit. I would put Porter on digs one-on-one on occasion. I'd see how that went early, but I would also double cover the heck out of him. He's one of the top 10 receivers in the league, I think. And you don't want him to get going and to sort of take over a playoff game. Um, so uh, the Steelers have options, even with all the injuries here, over the final three weeks of the regular season, Chris, they've done a pretty decent job of keeping the lid on it. You know, they haven't been outscored by teams. So, um, you know, we'll see if they can keep it up. But uh, I, I like Porter's demeanor. He talked about it last week. He, he wants these matchups. He craves them. And I think at the very least, he's going to get a taste of, uh, of digs in one-on-one and, um, you know, early in this game. And then we'll see how it goes from there. Absolutely. We did a lot of talk about the defense. I want to talk about the offense for a little bit because I I think one of the biggest assets that could play into this game is that of the units on this on the field that will take the field on Sunday, the Steelers offense might have the, the, the smallest amount of tape to study it and the way that in the direction that it's going. And that might be an advantage or it might just be setting the Steelers up to fail in a really bad way. I want to talk about that, though, on the other side of this next break here. On the North Shore Drive podcast of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, Chris Carter, Ray Fittipaldo, stick with us. But first, I want to remind you, we're brought to you by Savinas Kane and Gallucci. They're mesothelioma and asbestos lawyers with over 85 years of experience. Call them now for a free consultation. That's Savinas Kane 
and Gallucci. We're also brought to you by GameTime.co, the website that you need to go to right now to buy tickets to your favorite events without it being stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. If you ever had to buy tickets for an event but weren't comfortable with how much you were paying because you weren't sure about how good the seats were, that's that's that kind of stuff happens to me all the time. If you're trying to wait for the last minute to get the best price, sometimes you're going to the, uh, going up to the arena for the concert or the game or whatever you're going to, and you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll try to see what they have at the ticket booth. Like, ah, oh, no, those are some expensive prices still. Or you try to see, you see some great prices for some scalpers who are trying to get you some tickets you're like ah i don't know if this is a really good ticket well game time is where you can beat both in instances right there because game time is going to get you the best prices and in the app that you can download right on your phone called game time you can you can see the view from the seats every time you're looking at them so that you know that you're getting the right value for the right price and game time so confident they're going to get you the best price on on, the, on your on your seats they're promising you a best price guarantee that if you find tickets in the same section and row for less somewhere else game time will credit you 110 of the difference snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code pitt pit for 20 dollars off your first purchase or go to the website gametime.co terms of business apply create an account redeem code pitt pit for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed we're back here in the north shore drive podcast i'm your host chris carter here with ray fittipato ray this steelers offense is not the steelers offense that we saw for most of the year i mean a lot of players in the same thing still the same playbook but they're playing at a different level, even with just scoring 17 points against the Ravens. Ray, you were at that game. It looked like a monsoon on television. It the the, the cameras to the game couldn't stay dry. We were looking at it. It was it was like we were looking at it through you know a rainy windshield. Do you, do you find it remarkable that Mason, that Mason Rudolph was able to go 18 of 20 for 150 in a touchdown, or do you think that that was kind of just an average performance for a quarterback, regardless of the weather? No, I mean, I, I think both quarterbacks um, had to deal with that weather, um, you know, wet balls the entire game. I think that's why it was so important that the Steelers running game controlled the, the line of scrimmage in that football game. And, you know, the, the Ravens, I think the Ravens had over 100 yards rushing, but they didn't get that until late in the game. And I, I thought that was the biggest difference in the game. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, first play of the first quor- uh, fourth quarter, was that pass to Deontay Johnson. I don't think it's any coincidence that there was a dry ball on the field, you know, and they, 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 you know, they, they had a, a chance to, uh, you know, get a good grip there. And, you know, that was a great, that was a great throw. I mean, he led him in stride, split the safeties there. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, a great catch and run by, by Mason and Deontay. So, um, you know, that game you almost have to take with a grain of salt. Um, Mason was really good in that Bengals game and he was really good, um, against Seattle too. So provided the weather is okay. And we kind of don't know what to expect. I think they're expecting some weather up there over the weekend. We don't know if it's going to snow yet, but, uh, first time I looked was 26 and cold, but clear on game day. So if it's like that, I think Mason will have a chance to go out there and make some plays again. I think, I think you'll have a chance and I think that he'll, He'll get a chance to go out there, and this is this is a Steelers offense, like I said before. That I, I think they're still they, they've found they found their identity, you know. And Najee Harris has said as much in recent weeks. He's come he's come out and said like, "Hey, we're, we're playing to what we want to be." And you could even see in that Ravens game, and I I know the Ravens were playing backups and everything, but so were the Steelers. Um, and that was a that was a uh, that was a, a, a game where the Ravens did want to win, and they did start several people, including Patrick Queen, who I thought they'd sit in that game. Uh, but the Steelers were still able to run the ball. Najee Harris was still looking like a strong running back. Uh, Isaac Sayamalu blocked his butt off in that game. Uh, and I also thought, you know, Broderick Jones was getting was getting after it <laughs> there, and it, it created space for for the Steelers run game. I just I look at this and I and I say if I'm if I'm a team, I have a very small window of study of what this Steelers offense actually is right now because. You got Najee Harris in this run game. They've started to break out over the past like 10 weeks or so. And I think over the last 10 games, they have uh, eight games over 100 yards rushing as a team, seven games over 130 yards rushing as a, as a team. So like they've put that, that, that out there, but they haven't had that with an efficient passing game, which you've only had for the last three games where Mason Rudolph has had three straight games with a passer rating of 112 or higher. And I think that could provide an interesting test 
for teams that want to come out and game plan for what the Steelers want to do and a chance for the Steelers to basically counter is like you you think that what we did the last three games is what we're going to lead off with maybe not switch it up and catch them off guard yeah I think we saw two different approaches over the final three weeks I think if you look at what Zach Taylor and Pete Carroll did they were willing to put Deontay Johnson and George Pickens in one-on-one situations um, with their outside corners and they were willing to take their chances um, to see how that went. And, uh, you know, Pickens and Johnson made both of those teams pay. I think you saw a different approach in this game. I think, you know, Mason came out and said after the game, they pretty much double covered Pickens the entire game. They weren't going to let him um, dictate the, the the terms of that football game. And other than Deontay Johnson making that one play, there wasn't a lot for the Steelers offense in that game. Friar Muth was held down, I think, three for 21 Najee Harris also had 21 receiving yards. So my point is, which way are the, the Bills going to lean here? Do you want to take Pickens out of, out, of, out of the equation? He's he's their number one receiver, and you want to take your shot um, covering Johnson and Frymuth one-on-one, or do you want to just pack it in and, hey, Mason, if you can – if Mason Rudolph can, can beat us deep by throwing to George Pickens, then maybe we'll take our chances. So I think we've seen two different approaches – by these coaches here over the, uh, the final three weeks. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what Sean McDermott does here. I don't know the way the Steelers are playing now. They seem to have an answer for everything. So um, I'm kind of anxious to see how that's going to unfold on Sunday. Same here. And this is a Bill's secondary too. That's pretty interesting right now. Tredavious White's on injured reserve, but Teron Johnson, Russell Douglas, and former Pitt cornerback Dane Jackson play a role here. Uh, I don't expect Demar Hamlin's been inactive a lot this year. So, but you still, but still, there are three safety look of Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, Taylor Rapp. Those are all three very competent guys that can move around the secondary and give you certain looks. But uh, you know, that's not a secondary with a lockdown guy who I think can just right. wipe out. Uh, picking so if they want to double him that's fine but I, I think Mason Rudolph one of the things that he's shown I think that has been the most impressive uh with uh with this year is he's been able to use players as decoys and and work around them and you know he did that with the first with his first game against the Bengals he admitted we knew they would try to take away Pat Fryer because he had 120 yards against the Bengals when Kenny Pickett started and they did and so he went to George Pickens and then you saw with this last game against the Ravens he had talked about it. yeah they were doubling George all game but you know what he went other places and sure wasn't for a whole lot of yards but again in a monsoon that's a lot tougher he only threw two incomplete passes one was on and, and both were just on third downs one where he tried to force a ball over the middle almost got intercepted another where he tried to get a deep ball and just it looked like Deontay Johnson just lost sight of the ball uh it, it, when it was in the when it was in the air in the monsoon but looking at how looking at how he played there and how he's played his, these last three weeks I think his biggest strength is reading the defense and just taking what's there he's not trying to be the ultimate playmaker he's not trying to do the things that Josh Allen does he's trying to play within the Steelers scheme and I think that could be a very good big advantage to the Steelers if he's able to do that avoid the big mistakes and give the Steelers playmakers chances when the when the when the Bills defense isn't you know all over them yeah uh, a couple of things to keep an eye on Rasul Douglas was injured in that game on Sunday night I don't think he returned to that game so that's definitely going to be something to watch you already mentioned White being on IR he's their top corner Um, so we'll, we'll have to watch that injury as the week goes on and, uh, you know, Jackson, I know he's a local guy, but um, he had a PI and he had a defensive holding in that game. And, uh, you know, I, I think if there's one guy that maybe teams are going to hone in on um, in that Bill secondary, I think, uh, you know, Jackson is the guy. So we'll see if the Steelers can maybe create some matchups with Deontay Johnson one-on-one with him or maybe Calvin Austin one-on-one with him. It seemed like Jackson was having a hard time keeping up with the uh, Dolphins receivers last night. So, um yeah, I, you know, I think uh, the, the the matchup there, I think, is a decent one for the Steelers. We all know they want to run the ball. That's what they're going to focus on first and foremost. But we've seen over the last three weeks when they've had um, opportunities to make plays in the passing game, guys like Pickens and Johnson, they've come through, and they've come through big time for the Steelers. Absolutely. We'll have a lot more to break down throughout the week. The Steelers locker room opens up today on Monday, and then Mike Tomlin speaks on Tuesday. We'll have our team on hand for that all week long. Get all your Steelers updates for their playoff game against the Buffalo Bills this 1 p.m. Sunday 
at right here at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, post gazette.com for all our written work. And here on your podcasting app or on YouTube, like this video if you enjoy it, subscribe to this channel, you get all of our daily episodes of different content. This show, the North Shore Drive podcast, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday this week as we get you ready for the season or get ready for this game all week long. Thanks so much for riding with us here in the North Shore Drive podcast from Chris Carden, Ray Fedapato. We'll see you very again very soon here on the show, keeping you up to date with your Pittsburgh Steelers. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all the sports coverage from the Post-Gazette that we have to offer, visit post-gazette.com.